Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to keep everyone alive in the quarry. This will help with the achievement or trophy rough night, which is keep everyone alive. You only have to keep the counselors alive. You don't have to worry about the hackets. You can do whatever you please with them. There's not really much else to say. Let's get this going. Well, All right. So the first choice we've got to make is to break into the cabin when we're playing as Abigail in chapter one. You'll get given the choice to leave the bags or break in. Make sure you choose break in. This is important for later on when it comes to keeping Caitlin alive. It's not really necessary, but it helps. So when you get inside, you want to grab the bear that's on the shelf. And Caitlin can use this in the very last chapter to help her out. So the next thing we've got to worry about is if you take the rotor arm as Jacob. If you don't take the rotor arm, Jacob just straight up doesn't jump in here, so you won't have to deal with these choices. But if you did take the rotor arm, then uh, you can either go to help Abby or dive in. I chose dive in here. If you choose help Abby, you won't have to go through these choices. It's up to you what you do, but I just thought I'd kind of play out the worst case scenario here just in case... This is where you find yourself. You can get Jacob killed here. I think this is the earliest place you can get someone killed. So... You'll get given a couple of quick time events. I'll show you what to do with those in a moment. There's only really a few sections of each character in which you can get them killed. Right, so we're going to choose grab here. It doesn't actually matter if you get the rotor arm back. Succeed that quick time event, which is up W or up on a control stick. And uh, you'll get a piece of evidence for that as well. If you don't go through those series of events, you won't get the uh, evidence there. When you get given the choice to pull or detangle, you want to choose detangle. And this will keep Jacob alive and you'll get the rotor arm back and get the evidence there like i said that is the worst case scenario you can just like break the fuel line you won't end up doing any of that or go and help abby when given the choice and you won't do any of that either but it's just you'll miss out on that evidence so you never know there might be some people who find themselves on this path all right so next up is another way that we can kill jacob and this is one that everybody has to deal with no matter what, I'm pretty sure. Unless you've got Jacob killed just before this. Um, but during this chapter, when Nick and Abigail come back after being bitten by the werewolf, you will have a couple of options as uh, Ryan to shoot into the bushes. Make sure you don't shoot into the bushes. Doing so can get Jacob killed. Just let the uh, quick time event time out. Be careful. Yeah, like I said, you'll get two opportunities here to shoot. Just don't shoot during either of them. And you'll keep Jacob alive. Yeah. But is it gone? Yeah, you better run. Very brave. All right. So, uh... Lodge is sounding pretty good right about now, yeah? So there we go. I'm here to save Jacob saved again. So the next person we've got to worry about is Emma. And when you reach this point, when she's doing her vlogging stuff, you'll have a choice between going for search the bags or use the trapdoor. You want to make sure you search the bags. And I don't think I've got the best example of... Uh, this section but i can explain it and hopefully it will make some sense to you when the uh the werewolf jumps out of the trapdoor you can choose bear spray or the taser if you choose the taser you'll get a chance to get some evidence it's up to you what you use both play out the same pretty much but uh yeah using the taser like i said will get you a piece of evidence okay so i think there's something up there and it is 
not going to make me jump, I can promise you that much. <sighs> Goodbye, cruel world. The final curtain is calling and there's no time for an encore. All right, so here's your choice. I chose the taser because you can get the evidence for doing so. You'll get like a little option to take a photo after this, which is a piece of evidence if you care about that. Probably one of the more tricky ones to get. So now I'm just going to run <clears throat> and essentially to keep Emma alive and not get her infected, just pass all of the quick time events. I will show them. Um, although I think I missed a couple, which in this particular clip resulted in Emma getting infected. It's up to you what you want to do. Maybe you want to get her infected for some reason, but you don't have to do that to keep her alive or anything. And uh, getting her infected can actually get people killed later on, so you might want to just go ahead and succeed all of these quick time events. There's a bunch of them. I think it's like the very last one I managed to fail. And the last two quick time events are the ones that can get her infected. But like I said, if you're just trying to keep her alive and keep everyone alive, just pass them all. Pass all the quick time events. <clears throat> At least you can see what you've got to do to pass them. You'll get a choice here whether to block the door or go for the trap door. It doesn't really matter what you choose. I just chose the trap door because it just jumps through the window if you block the door anyway. <laughs> So these next two quick time events can get you infected. She won't die from this, like I said, but getting Emma infected can get Jacob killed later on. So avoid getting infected here if you can. Hopefully it's still understandable. But you know, you never know, you might be trying to infect everyone in a playthrough. I thought I had it recorded with me just escaping without a hurt, but I didn't, so I just went ahead and used this clip. It's basically the same. I will have a video coming soon on how to infect everyone, so look out for that if that's something you're interested in. Right, and after that, Emma will escape. She's alive at the moment, but if I continued along with this save, Emma would end up turning into a werewolf, and there's a possibility that she'd kill Jacob later, so... Make sure you don't get her infected. All right. So, next up, we're in chapter five. This is when Dylan gets bitten. If you've opened the cabin in chapter one, Dylan will get bitten here no matter what. And if you want to keep him alive, just go ahead and cut off his hand or shoot it off with the shotgun. It's up to you what you choose, but basically in this next choice, you're going to have to choose between saying no or cutting it off and you want to pick the desperate option which is cut it off. And like I said, you'll get a choice between the shotgun or the chainsaw. It doesn't matter what you choose, both play out the same. If you don't break into the cabin at the beginning of the game, then Dylan doesn't get bitten here, I'm pretty sure. But he does stay alive, he just loses his hand. Kind of crazy. There's also a nice Evil Dead reference there with Groovy on the chainsaw. I like that. That's why I picked the chainsaw. All right. So that'll keep Dylan alive, and he's not infected. Him being infected um, can mess some things up later on. So I choose not to do that. Okay. So now. I think this is chapter six. It might be chapter five, I'm honestly not sure, but you'll come to this point where Emma and Jacob sort of meet back up and they're running away from the werewolf. And uh, basically you just want to succeed the quick time events. So I'll be ready for this one. Emma will get knocked off into the water here, but she's fine. We're controlling Jacob here, so we don't really have uh, anything to do with her right now, but she's fine. Okay, so run or hide is up to you. If you run, you have to do a mash event. Succeed that to stop Jacob from getting infected. If you hide, you have to do a don't breathe event. I'm sure you guys know how that works. And right here 
is where Jacob has to either pull himself free or pry open the bear trap he gets stuck in. Make sure you choose pry open. If you choose pull, you'll get Jacob killed here. He sort of slams his face into a bear trap. One of my favorite deaths in the game. Um, and side note, if Jacob's infected by this point and he drops his face into the bear trap, he actually survives, which is kind of crazy. The stupid thing about that is he literally would have gotten infected like 15 seconds before this. And then he slams his face into a bear trap and survives, which is kind of weird. But Jed comes along here and saves Jacob. And that ends up with him in the cage a little later on. So in chapter 6, when Nick throws Abby across the room, you get a choice as to whether to shoot Nick or not. You want to make sure you shoot him. He's infected, so... He'll be fine if you shoot him, but it just keeps Abby alive. If you don't shoot him, Nick ends up just ripping Abby's head off, which isn't very nice. So make sure you take the shot when you get the opportunity. So next up when you're playing as Emma and you get the chance to run from the hunters, just don't run. Damn. Damn. This way Jed and Bobby will find Emma and uh, they'll check her for bites but they won't actually do anything to her so she'll get away and go and hide in the car. If you've gotten Emma infected at this point. She'll end up hanging out in the car, and then later in the game, she'll jump out on Caitlyn and Dylan and Abby. Um, so you want to make sure you don't have Emma infected at this point. It's up to you how you handle that, though. You can actually infect everyone and save everyone in one playthrough. It's just a little bit more difficult. I'm going to do a playthrough like that soon. Post it all up. Haven't posted a full playthrough of this game yet, but I will soon. So in chapter 7, when you gain control of Laura, you're going to want to make sure you go and get the syringe. Um, the reason you want to do this is if you, well, because if you don't and you end up shooting Travis and leaving him in the jail cell later on in the game, uh, he'll kill Laura. And the main reason you want to be able to keep Laura alive, well, for one, you can kill her in, in many different ways sections of the game towards the end it's actually quite easy to kill her at the very end of the game um, but i thought i'd do this way so you can kill silas as well at the very end of the game but uh yeah it's easy to miss the opportunity to do this but basically you want to get the syringe that's in this room and then put it in the uh brick or the brick you can pry off in the cell before you go to sleep so it's in this locker kind of weird thing happened here the locker was already open it should be closed for the cutscene but for some reason it was open but whatever grab the syringe out of there and then go and put it in the jail cell and then when you end up faking that you're sick in the jail cell travis will come and you stick him with the syringe and that way you won't have to shoot him, and he won't kill you later. We do want to get Laura killed um, for another achievement, but not this time. We're trying to keep everyone alive. Obviously, you can kill the Hackett's if you want to. That's another video I'm going to do soon. 
although that one's not all that complicated, to be honest, killing all of the Hackets. I'd say the one that's the toughest to kill is probably Bobby. I'll make a quick video about it soon, though. So, nail this quick time event as Laura, and that way Travis will survive without being shot, and he won't kill anyone Fuck. later. Which is decent. Because we're saving everyone. If we don't do this, he will end up killing someone in a later chapter. So when you're next to the electrified cages as Ryan, Laura will go to shoot the werewolf that's in the cage. That's actually Nick, so you want to stop Laura when you get the opportunity. Ryan will get the opportunity to stop her. Make sure you click to stop. So next up, when you get given the choice to help or leave Jacob, you want to choose help Jacob. Talk me through it. Okay. And okay. Okay. then you've got to mess with the breaker okay. switches so, to get him out. All I know. And this is a pretty simple so puzzle. I have to open my door and that door. And definitely not that door. Basically oh, the um Okay, fuck you, man. I'm trying to help. No, <laughs> fuck you. I'm trying to Shut up. Shut up. Okay, there's a console. Great dialogue. On the wall over there like a box or whatever. You should be able to use those switches to isolate each cage. Okay. Hang tight. Okay. All right, so the numbers on the cages are basically what you're trying to figure out here. And they are three and five. So you've got to flip the switches so that they, they, so that they add up to those numbers to open up those doors. So you can just do one and two, and then you can do three and two, or you can do one and four. It's up to you. As long as each time you do it, it adds to three and then five. Hold on, not just the middle one, dude. You're Don't free, Jacob. Yourself. Very simple little puzzle. Not really many puzzles in this game, or any puzzles for focus, that matter. Dude, focus. I suppose the puzzles are all in the choices, right? Some of the stuff in this game is quite convoluted, to be fair. Saving everyone isn't that hard, killing everyone isn't that hard, and infecting everyone isn't that hard. Some of the collectibles are more difficult, and also just getting certain types of deaths is also quite difficult because there's just so many different branching choices that can result in different things happening. Oh, damn. You look awful. Thanks. Hell. All right, so that's Jacob saved. You don't have to worry about him anymore. So when you reach this section as Ryan, Laura will give you the option to get bitten. You want to accept the bite. No matter what happens before this, make sure you accept the bite. Um, otherwise, Ryan will die in a future section. If you, you'll end up shooting Chris to break the werewolf curse, and then Ryan will die from blood loss if you don't accept the bite from Laura here. He's the only character you actually need to get infected throughout the game. Um... Laura, Max, and Nick all get infected by default. You can't do anything about them getting infected. It just happens, but you have the choice with Ryan here, and if you don't pick to get him infected, he'll end up dying, so... Don't pull away when given the option. Just wait. Alright, so next up we're playing as Dylan in the scrapyard. Um, uh, no. So Caitlin's going to get attacked here. And you're going to have to, well they're both going to get attacked and you're going to need to do your best to um, save them both. So I choose warn Caitlin here. She'll get in the car. I'm not sure if they removed it, but when the game first released, there was a really cool song that played here. And it's not there anymore, so I don't know if they've removed the song from the game. So I nailed that first quick time event there. In a minute, you'll get a choice. But it is a really cool song that plays here, or at least it did. I don't know if they had to switch it over because I play in streamer mode obviously because of videos choose sound horn here so maybe they had to switch it over because it was causing copyright issues or something I don't know 
So Caitlin will jump from the car. She'll be fine. And then the werewolf's gonna come and attack Dylan. So you'll have a long mash, quick time event heal. It's W on PC, it's X on PlayStation or A on Xbox. Gonna have another quick time event heal. And that'll stop Dylan from getting killed. Also, going through the quick time events like that will stop Caitlyn from getting infected. Although, to be honest, it doesn't matter if you get Caitlyn infected here. Because we're going to kill Chris Hackett in the next section. Which means um, Caitlyn won't be infected. Either way, I'm going to kill Silas at the end so anyone's infection is going to be broken. We need to kill Chris Hackett because Max is infected by Chris. And when Chris dies, Max... Um, Loses the werewolf curse, which means you have an option to save him or kill him in uh, a future section. All right. So this is where the Hackets all get killed. Any Hackets you've got left will die here, except for Bobby and Travis, depending on what happens. Shoot Chris when you're given the option, or shoot the werewolf. And because of the way we've made things play out with everyone else... And like I said, by not shooting Travis, he won't kill anyone here. We'll all be friends. Which is all good in my book. Alright, so now we're going to take control of Max for a short period. When you walk down a path that you were on as Emma earlier, you'll come to the end and get given a choice as Max. The only choice you get as Max. And you can either... Swim to shore or stay put on the island. Choose stay. If you go to swim over to the island, uh, Max will die. So just keep him here. That will keep him alive. All right, so now we're playing as Caitlyn. This is just before you prepare for the attack. So now that you've gained control, come over to the kitchen. You pretty much want to do a 180 degree turn and come over here and you can find Abby's bag interact with the bag the and you'll find the toy that we put in there earlier on and we can use this to keep Caitlyn and uh, Dylan alive. At this point, I think in this particular clip I didn't have Dylan with me, but if you followed along with the video you should have Dylan with you here as well. So when you've prepared for the attack you'll be playing as Caitlyn and you want to pick Run here. Okay, okay, Again, Dylan will be with you through these cutscenes, but you're only controlling Caitlyn, so just follow along with what I'm doing and Dylan will be just fine. The choices all play out the same. You can also kill the werewolf here. Although I didn't. It kind of sucks that you can't keep everybody alive. If you can literally save everybody... Except for Kaylee. If you want to keep everyone alive, even the Hackett's, the only person that definitely dies throughout the game is Kaylee Hackett. But as a side note, you don't actually have to keep the Hackett's alive. You can kill the Hackett's and still get through the playthrough. Get your achievement. It's just the counselors you need to keep alive. So that's... Uh, we're going to choose the beam here. There's a couple of quick time events along there. So we need to save Jacob, Nick, Dylan... Caitlin, Abigail, Emma, Max, Laura, and there's probably other people I'm missing, but Ryan. I'm pretty sure there's nine counselors. Probably missing somebody, but it's all right. Okay. So succeed that MASH quick time event. And Caitlin will be just fine. So right here you can run or hide. It doesn't matter what you pick. As long as you succeed the quick time event. If you go to hide you'll be fine. Which is a don't breathe event. But if you just choose run. 
you'll end up here anyway. It works out the same both ways. You just get one less quick time event if you choose run. So right here, if Abigail has got the silver shells from a little bit earlier, you'll get a choice to investigate or run. Just choose run. I'm not going to kill Caleb in this playthrough. If you're just aiming to keep everyone alive, just choose run. And when you're in heal, pretty sure you get a don't breathe event. So if you didn't know, the way these things work is basically you wait for the red pulsing light thing to go away on the screen and then you can release the button you've got to press to hold your breath. Actually makes these don't breathe events really easy. So right now is the time. And when you get over here, you'll get a choice to go for the freezer. I think... You can run, you want to choose the freezer. A few different things can happen here. Um, you can either lock yourself in the freezer and Kaylin will die. If she's infected, she'll actually survive. But because we got the decoy, we're going to use the decoy that we grabbed in the very first chapter of the game. That's why we grabbed that. And then Kaylin will throw that into the freezer. And the werewolf will go in, and then you have to mash to close the door. A really cool death is actually if you miss that quick time event of mashing, Caitlyn kind of gets dragged into the uh, freezer with Caleb. Pretty cool death. Alright. So that's it for Caitlyn. And, uh,. We're going to move on to the final section of the section of the game, which is when we're playing so as Laura with Travis and Ryan. Driving down the middle of the road. Silas is going to jump on the roof and you're going to have a few quick time events here. I missed that one there just because it's comical. But when you gain control again, you're going to have to pass the quick time events. If you do pass that one, just pick get down or take cover in the car. You really have to mess up bad in order to die here. Alright. So, you can either take cover or grab the gun. Just choose take cover. Pass the quick time events. And everyone will be just fine. Here we go. So if you do pull the handbrake there, the car will stop. If you miss it, Travis will be getting attacked by the werewolf. Hit that one, you'll save Travis. If you miss that one, Travis will get killed, so... Lots of chances if you mess up. I definitely wasn't prepared when I was doing those, but as you can see, there's lots of different chances for you to do stuff. Alright, so eventually, you'll have a few dialogue choices, but then you'll reach this point. And you've got to shoot Silas. Shooting Silas will rid everyone of the werewolf infection. And this will keep all of the counselors alive. A few of the Hackets are dead, but not all of them. You can actually kill Silas and Travis here if you want to. We're just going to go with killing Silas. All right, that's it. At this point, you should have everyone alive for the achievement. Travis... And Bobby might have survived in your playthrough, but I'll have another video coming for how to kill all the Hackets. And uh, hopefully if you watch all of those, you can build your own knowledge on how to do whatever kind of playthrough you want. So yeah, hopefully the videos helped you out. And that's about it. I'll see you next time.